Hi all, hope all is well. On today's video, I wanted to touch upon the importance of what electrodes to use when doing electrolysis from home, um, such as an example as you see here in front of you. Now, the reason it's important to choose the right electrodes to produce um, electrolysis results is due to the risk of contamination um, and unwanted byproducts during the process of electrolysis. Now, I've seen some videos online um, that show, you know, for example, people using steel wool. And because of the surface area, steel wool would be ideal for producing some products, um, but very inappropriate for creating others. Now, you could, instead of using the electrodes such as I've used here, so if we take this off, up and we'll pull that up so it doesn't fall in we'll open it up so you can see here the electrodes I'm using even though this one's just coated in carbonate and hydroxides are actually carbon electrodes um, it's a bit hard to see in the light but we've got a carbon electrode down here so we'll have a look at that so here's a carbon electrode I've used in the past and you can see I'd say this was used in the anode side. You can see it's very corroded at the end, um, but not as corroded as this one in here, which has been corroded down to a knob and broken. But carbon is perfect for doing electrolysis of seawater and for producing sodium hydroxide. And the reason for that is, is because the contamination that occurs when these rods break down in the seawater and in the sodium hydroxide and in the chlorine side are far less toxic they're not toxic at all um, so they break down and they can be you know absorbed into the fluid here as you can see down the bottom here they're falling out of the solution um, so it's just disintegrating from the electrode and it's coming down to the bottom of the jar here and settling as a sediment on the bottom of the jar so we can siphon the whole top of it and not have any of the carbon actually contaminate our solution. And that's important, especially if you're doing like water purification by using the chloride solution or the chlorine solution, sorry. Um, and it's also important on the hydroxide side as well, because if you're using, for example, stainless steel, such as this here, such as the, the wire, the, um, the wall, the stainless steel wall, or even this knife, for example, which is stainless steel, you could find yourself working with um, toxic byproducts of the process. And what happens is during the electrolysis process, the stainless steel begins to break down in both sides um, and it leaches chromium, which is what they use to create the stainless of the steel. It leaches the chromium into the solution itself and chromium is toxic so you want to avoid using stainless steel electrodes i've seen quite a few videos online like i said using the the wool um, the stainless steel wool the cleaning wool that you use in your kitchen sink i've even seen them using um, teaspoons and stuff like that from made of stainless steel and they work very well and they're fairly durable but you have that risk of leaching chromium into your anode and your cathode. And I'm not sure if you've ever seen the film Aaron Brockovich, but I highly recommend it. It's a fantastic movie. Um, but in it, the subject of concern is hexavalent chromium. And hexavalent chromium can be produced by people processing electrolysis using stainless steel rods. Um, the only time you'd use stainless steel, um, such as this wool here, for example, is if you wanted to produce hydrogen. So if you're using just a um, plain seawater or plain water in general, and you had two electrodes made up of this substance, so you'd just hang that in the jar and you'd hang that in the jar, and then you'd connect your clamps up to the top here, you would never use the solution but the amount of gas it would produce because of the surface area of the wool itself would be phenomenal. 
and it would give you a really good yield of hydrogen gas which is what you're seeing in some of these motor vehicles now where they're injecting hydrogen into the fuel line um, because hydrogen is extremely flammable um, it can be burnt very cleanly as well and in fact when you burn hydrogen you can create water so there's a lot of interest around using hydrogen as a fuel source and at some point I'd love to be able to um, produce some and collect it into a vessel and then demonstrate just how flammable it is as a substance um, but for the demonstration of this video using seawater um, we're going to avoid using stainless steel and I recommend you avoid it as well don't do it stick with your carbon rods these can be purchased um, on eBay and stuff like that um, or you can use even charcoal say if you can't get access to that you can use charcoal so you can create a pit and light a fire in it and then snuff it out by building a clay dome over the top of it um, or by putting a sheet of tin across it and just allow enough oxygen in there for it to smoke and you'll produce yourself a good supply of carbon um, now these carbon electrodes if you were to try and put this in there for example um, you'd have to cut it to fit um, and then just cut the top of your jars to fit as well and they wouldn't be as durable as your carbon rods for example but they would be very suitable for the process and in fact it'd be the better solution and i'm going to do it at some stage as well i'll i'll create an electrolysis unit using carbon that i've collected from a fire um, so that's a good way to get around it if you can't get access to these another way to get access to your carbon rods is at an art supply shop if you go there and have a look there's plenty of charcoal artist charcoal that's available um, and they're normally square units or round units you can get graphite as well from um, the mechanical paste uh, pens so the, the mechanical pencils um, by pressing the top you can extrude out a thin line of graphite and that is suitable as an electrode as well except extremely small surface area so having said that here's another piece here actually so this is a another carbon rod but it's considerably smaller um, that would also be very suitable for the electrolysis of seawater this here on the other hand is brass and brass again is suitable in some applications such as producing uh, hydrogen but not suitable for utilizing in an electrolysis setup that's processing seawater again it has nickel in it and you'll leach your nickel out into the solution which is which is potentially toxic um, depending on the um, saturation points and stuff like that as well so depending on the amount of nickel in the solution depends on its toxicity so you want to avoid that as well so i hope that helps people um, especially if you're looking at doing a setup such as this at home um, it's a good idea to have a little bit of um, information in regards to exactly what type of electrodes you should be using and what type of electrodes you should be avoiding um, as tempting as it is yes avoid your stainless steels avoid your brass and your nickels stick to your carbon rods in any form you can get it so charcoal is a form of carbon of course um, and then you have your carbon rods and stuff like that that are specifically manufactured for these purposes i've recently purchased a few more um, but i've had to go well overseas to actually get access to it um, but they are on their way so i can't wait for them to arrive and when they do arrive um, i will make a video on them they're quite long actually they're 250 mil long so i look forward to receiving them as well um, now there are obviously in labs professional labs and stuff like that there are other options for your electrodes and one of them is platinum and the other is titanium um, so metal oxide mixes and stuff like that as well so pretty much if you were looking at purchasing a platinum one or a titanium one you're looking at an expense a very large expense um you're talking like 400 dollars, i believe usd for 10 pieces that are an inch by an inch in in diameter so very tiny pieces that you can suspend in there on either side but you won't get your toxicity so if you're willing to spend the money platinum or titanium is definitely a good option um, but 
for backyard setups, such as what I'm doing here, where you're still learning the process, as I am here. I am definitely no expert, um, but I highly recommend you could use your Platinums or your Titaniums. If you can't afford to be buying them, stick to your carbon electrodes in any form you can get it, whether it's graphite, whether it's charcoal, and whether it's your carbon rods themselves. And I think that will about do it for this video. Um, if you found any information in this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. We, um, I appreciate all the subscribers and I do appreciate the conversation that's forming in the comment sections of these videos as well. Um, I believe dialogue is extremely useful when um, people are doing research and stuff like that to have a look into the comment section um, and see what the discussions are around the video themselves. But other than that, thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye.